Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at what is possibly the best value PC chassis on the market. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so this uh, very unassuming beige box uh, houses what I have found to be possibly the best value for money PC chassis on the market. Now, I'll go through some of the specifications and I'll tell you the price and hopefully you will understand why I think this is such a great value for money chassis. So, introduction first of all. This is the Colink Stronghold. Now, this is a budget chassis. By, uh, by any means, it's not a premium or high-end chassis. This is the bargain basement end of the spectrum. So, what does it have, even though it's a bargain basement chassis? So, you can't really tell from here, so I'm going to unbox it shortly, but basically you've got a tempered glass side panel, you've got 240mm radiator support on the top with removable magnetic filter, you've got airflow coming in from the front with a uh, brushed metal effect front panel, you've got a basement at the bottom for hiding a power supply, you've got mounting options for four SSDs and two hard drives, mounting options on the front for a 280mm radiator, possibly even a 360 if you push it. Mounting options for three fans on the front, 120 mil radiator or fan on the back, and full E80X support for larger motherboards. Plus you get a load of cutouts for cable mounting, no grommets, but lots of cutouts. So filtering, tempered glass, lots of water cooling features, and a pretty damn nice looking chassis for only £35. Yeah, that's right. I'll say it again. £35. You can get this chassis on Amazon at the moment. It's a little bit dearer than that. It's about 39 including postage. But I've seen it on AWI, AWDIT, whatever they're called, £35. It's absolutely mental. The side panel has got to be worth that almost on its own. Anyway, I'll go on too much. Let's get this thing out of the box so you can see what I mean and see how good this thing actually is and see what compromises have been made to bring it down to that price point. <coughs> right, so here it is. This is the Colink Stronghold. Now, as you can see, we've got a tempered glass side panel held on with four screws. Now, behind those screws are rubber grommets, so I've been reliably informed. So let's take it off straight away so we can have a look inside this chassis non-captive screws <laughs> very non-captive so I'm going to do undo all these screws and see if the side panel actually falls off and smashes which hopefully it won't and there we go so all four screws are out as you can see and the panel didn't fall out so the rubber grommets actually hold it in place there isn't a ledge at the bottom so let's just pop this off <coughs> So you've got a, uh, a slight smoke tint to the glass, not a very dark tint. I would have personally preferred to have seen a completely clear tint, but still, you can't have it all. Okay, so inside the chassis, so what have we got? So up the front, you've got mounting area for hard drives, etc. Uh, three and a half inch drives. You've got a complete, well, pretty much complete PSU shroud at the bottom with three cutouts at the back for cable routing and one at the front, which is a really nice thing to see for running uh, PCI Express power supply up to your graphics cards. That is a really nice feature and will simplify cable management a lot in that area. So coming around slightly more to the front, mounting area there for uh, 120mm fans. If I take this front panel off, it should just pop off. And let's remove all this wire. So the front panel, down one side completely ventilated, and on the side that faces you with the glass on, it's completely covered so the glass goes right the way over and covers up that to give it a completely uniform look on that side, which I personally like. Um, the cable in the back, not the easiest as cable managed by the looks of it, but uh, there's lots of cutouts etc, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now the actual panel itself is plastic but it has got a kind of brushed aluminium effect, so it actually looks a lot more expensive than what the price would indicate. 
we'll get onto that a little bit more later. So if we spin this round, you can see we've got a lot of mountain areas for fans there. Um, you could probably fit, you could probably get two 140s in there or three 120s. Um, you could have various gaps between them. So if you're looking at putting sort of um, LED fans in or something to try and get some light in through, obviously you're not going to see them through the front, but it will, uh, the light will sort of permeate through and highlight components inside the chassis. So plenty of options there for cooling. And because of that massive perforation all down that side, you've got a, a tremendous amount of airflow, hopefully, which is the whole idea behind swapping this chassis for the Cooler Master uh, Masterbox Lite 3.1, which I've been using in previous videos. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll see what a pain in the butt that case has been. I've cut it, cut it out, I've removed bits, I've added fans, I've changed configuration, and I've never been able to get it to run particularly cool or stable. And if you're trying to overclock in one of those cases, the cooling around the VRMs is absolutely horrendous. Um, unless you've got some serious cooling support in there, you will struggle. Now, people have uh, sent in a few letters and comments saying, oh, my system works, mine isn't. I've had nothing but problems with it, so it's had to go. And for the sake of £35, which is actually cheaper than what that thing cost me, and it's got tempered glass uh, side panel, whereas that's just acrylic, hopefully this is going to be much, much better. So we looked at the front, you get a fan included, which comes with a, uh, a three pin connector rather than a Molex, which is quite a nice thing to have. Uh, you get another fan included on the back, again, with your three pin motherboard header. Which again, very nice seat. Two fans in a case of this price, not bad at all. <clears throat> so mounting options on the side here for uh, four SSDs. Like I said, two hard drives in the base. Large cutout on the back for routing cables or gaining access to uh, water cooling or air cooling back plates, which again, fantastic, couldn't ask for more. On the back, you've got the, unfortunately, the kind of uh, bend to remove uh, rear plates, which I'm not a great fan of, again, but at this price, I'll probably it is to be expected. But again, if you're, working, if you're worried about those coming out and not going back in, you can always replace them with standard ones. You can put screws in and you're all good. So let's take the uh, side panel off, or the back panel off rather, and let's have a look from the rear. Now this panel actually, considering the price of the case, actually feels really strong. There is a little bit of flex to it, but it's actually really thick and quite heavy. A lot heavier than I was expecting. In fact, it's probably heavier than the glass. Okay, so from the back then, so we've got lots of cutouts and punch outs here for cable management. We've not got a massive amount of depth here in the back, unlike some of the other cases higher at the price range, like the uh, Fractal Define C, or the uh, NZXT sort of S340 or 500s. But you still got probably about an inch of gap down there to root cables, so cable management shouldn't be too much of a problem, but we'll find out about that shortly when we transfer all the bits across. So again, all the, uh, all the cutouts have been uh, folded and machine nicely so there's no sharp edges which you would probably expect in the case of this kind of price point. So there's the uh, rear access to the hard drives. You've got a ventilated and actually a removable filter on the bottom which is quite nice to see and it's not one of those horrible uh, flimsy ones it's actually quite a nice case filter with case filter power supply filter which just slots in and actually does lock into place which is fantastic. Again, much better than what you get on the Cooler Master case for more money. Um, so right, what else we got? So mounting places for SSDs, you've got lots of cutouts, especially in the top there for, uh, if you're putting a radiator in, you've got good cutout there to get the cables through for that, or RGB cables. And on this side, you've got a, a rather large cutout again for your EPS power connector for the motherboard. Again, fantastic additions at this price. Again, lots of cutouts, so cable management should be relatively simple. Now power supplies, they say you can get up to a 200 mil power supply in there. Um, I'm not sure what side mine is, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out later on. But yeah, lots and lots of room in this case. Now looking at the base, you see there's the uh, power supply filter. Got rubberized feet and the actual chassis is lifted up about an inch off the floor with these feet, which will allow some airflow to get into the, your um, power supply. So moving to the top, now this is a really nice feature again 
for a case, I keep on harking on, it's only £35. But this is £35. So on the top, you've got actually a, a really nice filter, which I haven't got a nail, so it's quite difficult to get out. But you've got a magnetic filter with quite thick magnetic beading around the outside edge, actually, which is quite nice because it keeps it nice and flat. Whereas some of the ones that have thinner beading tend to be a bit sort of uh, wobbly or wibbly. Wibbly and wobbly. So on the top here, you've got the mountings for your 240mm radiator or combination of 280mm in fans, so two 140s, uh, various combinations you can do there. And you've got lots of options with the, with the, um, the mountings there. You haven't got fixed individual holes, you've got lots of movement there. So if you've got a radiator or some kind of fan which has got a surround around it, and it's just a little bit bigger than 120mm, then it shouldn't be a problem at all getting anything to fit in here. Now, come on to the colour, actually. The colour of this case isn't your standard black. It's a kind of anthracite or almost like a gunmetal grey. So I'm not too sure what the camera's picking it up as, but it's not actually a jet black, which is actually quite a nice thing to see. It's quite surprising, again, at this price point. You'd expect it to be just blasted with the cheapest black paint they could find shipped out. So that is uh, pretty much all I can say about this at the moment. Obviously, I've not done a build in it as of yet, but as things look at the moment, it's, uh, it's looking pretty favorable. And hopefully now with this chassis, granted it is slightly bigger than the one behind me, but I should be able to now get my system in there, put the GTX 780 in there, which is the thermonuclear warhead that it is, and I managed to keep it cool enough to run some benchmarks and to uh, report back on temperatures. So before I do, actually, let's quickly take off this, uh, actually, I'll, I'll put on the front panel again, and I'll show you what the uh, the brushed metal looks like, which actually I haven't seen fully yet myself. So talking on the front panel, actually, something I completely missed is the, uh, the front panel I.O. So on the front, you've got a power button, a nice square clicky power button, two USB 2.0, one USB 3.0, a reset button and your headphone and microphone jacks. There is actually another button there which is not working, which is blanked out, which says RGB. Now the reason for that is because there is another model of this case which is exactly the same apart from the front panel and it's the uh, Colink Observatory RGB. Now that one's about 25, 30 pounds dearer, but it does come with a, uh, a glass front panel and also comes with a set of RGB fans and a controller. Um, if you want an RGB setup and you haven't got an onboard controller on your system and you want to take advantage of that, then I'll put the links in the description below so you can check that out for yourselves. Um, but again, that does knock the price up a little bit more and then you're getting into the kind of the, the more mid-range chassis that are available and I don't know whether the build quality of this can actually carry it with that price tag, but that's for you to decide. So let's take these uh, the front off. Nice peel. So, I don't know how well that's gonna pick up on the camera, but it's actually, it does look like it's a metal. Although being a plastic, it will probably scratch quite badly, but then brushed aluminium does scratch quite badly as well. But yeah, all in all, I'm, uh, I'm quite pleased. Again, for the price, 35 pounds, this is insane. How they managed to do it for this money, I really don't know. I would expect this to cost in the 40s, maybe as close to 50. If Cooler Master could put something together like this, at this price, they would definitely have a market winner on their hands. Unfortunately, Coolink have got probably a lot less of a, a name in the business or in the industry, so they will probably struggle. But if they put a branded name on this chassis, I think they could, uh, they could do really well. And this is very reminiscent of the um, Fractal Defined C, like I said before and probably the Corsair 400C, very similar in a lot of respects. But anyway, let's get this uh, taken apart, put the new PC in, give it some benchmarking, and uh, see how good the airflow actually is. Right, we'll be back after this short break.
Okay, so that's the build done and everything went pretty smoothly. A few little learning curves. Um, I'm not too sure with the fans on the front. Got three front mounts, three front mounted fans. It's easy for me to say. Um, whether or not they're going to be too close to the front of the um, front panel. There's a very narrow gap between there, so I don't know whether the air, because of it having to go sort of like a 90 degree angle to get into the fans, is going to restrict it slightly. Uh, I may well move the fans back behind the mounting rather than in front of the mounting, uh, just to improve the airflow. The only downside being is if I do move it behind, um, you can only have two fans on the rear of the mountain, not the three, at least by the looks of things at the moment. So uh, because of where the hard drive is at the bottom, that possibly will uh, sort of block out that area. But we'll see. Hopefully it's going to do all right, do okay. I've got the Zotac GTX 780 in there already. I thought I'm not going to bother messing around doing just testing with just the Ryzen on its own. I think this is going to be uh, man enough to uh, handle the temperatures as they are. So the build went pretty smoothly, like I said. Um, cable management was uh, very easy. There was a little bit, little bit tight in the back for some of the SATA connectors where they're uh, in series and you can't quite fold them flat sometimes. But if I spent a bit more time, they would have been rooted away quite nicely. But as you can see from the back, it's all quite clean, quite tidy and quite manageable. So we've ended up putting three fans in the front, one in the rear, none in the roof. Um, although I did notice if you do put a radiator in the roof, it is slightly offset, so as long as you've got relatively low profile RAM, you should be fine. Um, nothing to worry about there. And I actually noticed that the motherboard, the whole tray, actually sits down quite low. So nice and easy to route the cables through for the fans if you do have a uh, top mounted radiator. And routing the EPS power connector through the top was an absolute breeze, even with fat hands like mine. Plenty of room in there to do that. Um, so what did I like about this case? The side panel. The TG side panel I think looks great, although I would have preferred clear, but I think this uh, this light smoke is quite nice. It doesn't quite do it justice on camera with the lighting because it looks almost reflective, but actually to the human eye you can see through it quite well, so it's a little bit um, subjective. You need to be in front of it to see what it actually looks like. Um, I like the fan mountings, they're quite good. The overall space in the build was okay, even though now that there's a micro ATX case in there, um, it doesn't look too lost in there. It looks okay. It fits in quite nicely. Um, although it does really suit my uh, full size ATX or EATX motherboards. But uh, any board I go in there happily, no problem at all. And the cutouts and grommets all seem to be roughly in the right places, which is really nice. Depend depending on which motherboard you've got, you may find it slightly different. But in this particular case, uh, pun intended, then it all fits in there really nicely. Um, what did I not like? I didn't like the fixings on the back for the graphics card and the PCI cards. That was a little bit uh, of a pain in the butt, but again, you're very likely to ever use it very often or even see it, so it's not a deal breaker. Um, the routing for the front panel I.O. was a little bit tight trying to get it through the holes and could have been a little bit better, but it's still very neat, functional, and it works. Um, the power LED, or sorry, the hard drive LED being red, and the power one being blue is a little bit retro these days. It would be nice to see them being um, a neutral tone, but again, for £35, you can't ask for much more. It's a fantastic case, everything fits in there. Um, you've got lots of room for coolers, you can get a cooler of up to about 160mm of depth in there, or height, whichever way you look at it. Um, but all in all, yeah, a great chassis, I'm very happy with it. So, the next thing to do is do some benchmarking, run some, uh, run some Eugene Heaven on it, and see if we can uh, make it crash. So let's go ahead and try it now. Okay, so that's the uh, benchmarking done in the Coolink Stronghold case. And I'm pleased to say I have not had one single crash running the GTX 780 in this combination. Now I've taken out the red LED fans and I've changed them back to the ones that I used last in my Cooling Master Lite 3.1, which were the combination of the Arctic Freezer uh, F12 in the rear and two NZXTs up front and I've managed to get the temperature down even more. The graphics card now I've had running at 72 degrees, uh, which is uh, a lot better than what it was previously. It was getting up to the, uh, the higher 70s and 80s, and then crashing. So uh, the airflow is definitely, definitely a lot better in this chassis. Now I've moved the fans behind the grill rather than in front of the, uh, the grill mounting to try and put in a little bit more air. Still not entirely sure what is the best setup on that, but uh, if you've got any comments or solutions, then feel free to put them in the comments section below, and I'll uh, take it on board and give it a try. 
But all in all, very impressed with this chassis for £35. I know I keep on bleating on about it, but it is £35. A tempered glass chassis with a PSU basement, lots of flexibility for water cooling, lots of filtration. What else could you ask for? It's a steal, in my opinion. For a brand new, out-of-the-box chassis for £35 with all these features, you'd be mad not to try it, especially with the uh, alternatives that are available on the market. I think this is going to be right up most people's street. So anyway, this has been my unboxing and a quick review of the Coolink Stronghold chassis. I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how-to, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.